Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Carl Jeffers. I'm the referee tonight. Who's the doctor that's running the meeting? Scott Rodeo, New York Giants. How you doing, sir? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet well, you. ATC, you guys are ATC spotters? Yes. Great. Great. Yep, we'll go through um, and certainly want to have an open line of communication with you all. So when we go out on the field at 50 minutes, I'll radio up to you. Uh, ATC spotter, this is a referee. Are we online? Just to confirm that uh, communication. 60 minutes before every NFL game, a critical meeting takes place between game officials and key medical personnel to establish familiarity with one another while reviewing essential injury-related procedures. If we do decide to stop the game for head and neck trauma only, you'll tell us uh, what player, what team uh, that needs to be removed. Here are the faces of all the folks that you need to know about. This is the uh, field and x-ray layout and the emergency action plan. Fans can understand that football is a team sport. Well, the medical team is the same way. It is a multidisciplinary group of individuals of all specialties. It's all about teamwork. It's all about communication. In the event of a suspected head injury, the league's concussion protocol goes into effect. The first item on the concussion protocol is a trigger or an activation. And that can be done from a variety of individuals. So what we tell everyone is if you see something, say something. The NFL's concussion protocol can be triggered by some obvious and some not so obvious personnel. The team medical staff or unaffiliated medical staff in the red hats on the sideline. Two athletic trainer spotters and one unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant up in the booth. Game officials. Or even a coach, another player, or the injured player himself. The camera tends to follow the ball, right. right? So wherever the ball goes, that's where a lot of the times the camera. But somewhere we hope in the broadcast feed, there's going to be a, a picture that shows us exactly what's happening to that player, both before and after that hit. It is mandatory that every single concussion evaluation has to have the injury video reviewed by both the UNC, the unaffiliated doc, and the team physician. Every player who undergoes a sideline concussion evaluation enters the blue medical tent. So if we want to examine a player and we want to bring them in the tent, uh, someone will literally just come over, grab the tent, pull it up, oh, voila. That's quick. <laughs> and now we can go in. And basically what you can see is that we've now it's already created a medical exam here. room. And a little quieter. Completely quieter, and also we've eliminated all the visual distractions, right? right? There's not scoreboards that are flashing and plays that are going on. So if I need to do a concussion exam, I really need you to focus and concentrate. I'm going to examine your eyes and do some things where I need you really to lock in visually. And so that really is facilitated by being inside here. And the player is to stay in the tent until that is completed and the medical personnel determine whether they are cleared That's or correct. go back to the That's locker That's correct. Room. In fact, we take the player's helmet away from them so that they can't inadvertently grab a helmet and get back in the game until that decision has been reached. During the Giants' preseason game against the Patriots, a player is injured in the first quarter and the protocol is immediately put into action. Got a giant down. Yep. Uh, yep. Number 91. 91, 91 Giants. Dr. Taylor's at the IVRS. Okay. So here comes the tent coming up. This is the um, team physician in the UNC who were looking at the injury video together. Now they're going to go in so and do the exam. Started the they started at the video and, and now they're coming the in. Tent. Right. So you've got the team physician. There are several team physicians. You've got the red hat, the unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant. You've got the athletic trainer and you've got the player. Wilson throws left, and Dansby lowered his helmet, and he drilled Russell Wilson right in the chin. There were two incidents last year where it appeared that something was missed. Uh, Russell Wilson emerging from the medical tent in a rapid fashion. Yes. He went in the tent, and he just came right back out of the tent. He's got his helmet back on again. Right. And then Tom Savage uh, suffering what appeared to be a concussion and yet continuing to play. And he's he down in the end zone, up. slow to get up. And he's running off the field, slows down, now runs off again. And Reuben Foster is down on his back. Can you speak to those incidents and the follow-up that happened after those? We learned something from each of those incidents. So in the Russell Wilson incident, the referee identified a medical concern 
but unfortunately that concern didn't get communicated to the medical staff. We found as we investigated that that the protocol was followed uh, to a point, but then communication broke down and, and he did not receive the exam that he should have received. In the Tom Savage situation, the player on the opposite team was actually thought to be more seriously injured initially. As a result, the Texans team doctor saw the first video clip, which did not include a really good view of this fencing posture impact seizure. They did an exam, that exam was normal, and then when that video became available later, um, they, they saw it at a later time. We wanted to go back and do some education and look to see how we could improve so that we would prevent any kind of breakdown like that from occurring again. As a result of their review, the NFL Head, Neck and Spine Committee, which includes representatives from the NFLPA, implemented a change in 2018. They added a third unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant, or UNC, stationed in the spotter's booth to monitor broadcast video, adding an element of cross-checking to a protocol that continues to evolve. We'll continue to look at the concussion protocol every year, as I said, with our experts and see how we can get better. And so that's an ongoing process that we'll do every year.